僕の勝ちだね I nominate myself as the new leader Hey guys, thanks for joining me again. And today we're going to be unboxing the Star Scream on Throne by Imaginarium Art. And、um, I have the Thanos on Throne out here just because I just unboxed this. And I decided to just keep it out and do a quick side by side, which would be pretty cool. So it came in two enormous boxes. So let's go ahead and bring the, those up and start unboxing. This is box number one, as you can see. Kind of just has the、uh, pictures of、uh, the back of the throne with the missiles. And box number two has basically the front of the throne. You can barely get in the picture there. So I guess we'll just start with the back one. I don't know which one's the base, but let's just start taking the pieces out. Let's go ahead and flip this up. Go to the top view there. Here's the top panel. Put that over. And then everything's packaged very nicely. Just go one by one here. Just to start off, we have.、Uh, hmm. If you can see that, that is the seat. So we got a wing. There we go. There's our other wing. Cool Decepticon logo. Cool paint surfaces, no scratches, no blemishes. So that's the other leg. That's a big ass missile. Looks like the, one, the main body. It's a big, hefty piece there. Really cool. Okay, I think、uh, that's it for this box. Here is our second box. Let's go ahead and open this up. Ton of pieces again. So let's just start from this side. Ooh, look at that guy. Huge thing. So that's going to be、uh, the highest standing missile there. This one's even bigger than the last. So that's our center missile. There's the next missile. Another missile. Ooh, this one's a heavy missile. Oh, here's this missile. What do you know? Another missile.、And、there we go. That's a heavy one right there. Another,、uh, is that a missile cap or something? All right, looks like we got an, is that his arm? Gotta be his arm. There we go. Another missile. There we are. Oh, this looks like his gun or his laser. Same thing. It's cool, is that part of his collar? That's the head there. Big ass crown. There's our base. Really thick, pretty heavy. There we go. We are 26 of 400 Imaginarium Art. Pretty cool. Man, it is, seems like a hollow base there, but it's still very heavy. If you can see that, there's our base. Okay, welcome to the table. We had to take Thanos off. And oh my gosh, you won't believe this on how many pieces there are included. And it's utterly insane. I've never seen a statue with so many pieces. And I don't know if I like that. I hope they sit in there really, really secure. Because you got you got to be really careful with this. Man, there's a lot of、uh, fragile pieces,、uh, especially these tips there. You don't want to bump those. I could see those cracking real easy. Got two big ass wings, you got the seat. He got four big ass missiles, and might I add, let's see, these ones alone are about 18 inches. But that's not even the biggest ones. There's the main body. This base is utterly gigantic. You probably can't tell on here, but it runs about 21 inches. It's a huge base. And、uh, it's going to be about, what, three and a half, four inches, about four inches tall. And this missile, got to show you this. This one missile is 28 inches. So this whole thing's supposed to be 31 inches, and I can see where it all comes from. 
So you got our two lasers, you got our head sculpt, you got two big ass legs, you got arms, and uh, this is part of his jet pack. And there's his other arm, seven missiles. I don't know what those pieces are. This is gonna be one cool piece to put together. It's going to be fun, but like I said, I don't know if this is a good thing. Definitely going to have to be careful with this. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, start putting her together. We're going to start off by putting the, uh, the, the seat down or his cape, because that's basically the base. But before we do that, we have to put one of the missiles up because the cape actually sits on that and it helps actually support it. So let's go ahead and do that. So here's one missile, it kind of goes up into the front there. There we go. There we go. And we are on. So as you can see, that, that missile there does provide a little bit of stability to it, because as you can see, the cape doesn't move now and before it did. So let's go ahead and just go around the uh, circle and put the rest of our missiles on. Some of these are tricky, such as this one because you can't you almost you almost can't put it on unless you put the previous piece there so it kind of crisscrosses there on that missile and uh, like I said these can only go in one spot so you kind of just go around I kind of already put them in order there by shape let's go ahead and put our big ones Gonna go right in the middle. Guess that's just gonna sit there. Let's put this one on. Alrighty. Yeah, just like that. And then this one goes on. So some of these you gotta put in a particular order. So there we go. There's half of our missiles we got. Might as well just go down the line. All right, I'll get in there. Got uh, three more. Oh, this one's kind of curved up, so we're probably gonna want to put that first, then that one, and then our crescent. Our crescent missile here. And there's our missiles. We are finished with the missiles. All right, there we go. We got pretty much everything in place, and so far, it looks pretty cool. I still don't understand the missiles, but now that I look at it, it is really cool. It's very different. So let's go ahead and start putting them together. And I know this piece here is going to, let's see, it's gonna go up on the cape there's a magnet in there and it kind of sits there like that and the body actually goes on next let's go ahead and throw this body on there all right so it does stay there doesn't seem like it's too solid, but I'm gonna put on the legs just to give it a little more stability. There we go. And once you have that leg on, it's pretty darn stable. Alrighty. The next pieces I'm supposed to put on are his wings. So, these actually plug into the back. Oh. So we're gonna go ahead and put 
the wings on first. Okay, I had to do some tweaking there. There's actually a little order to put this in. Putting the wings on was a little confusing. Even now, uh, even the left wing is kind of resting on the chair. In my opinion, it shouldn't be hitting anything. So I think uh, <clears throat> the best thing to do is put on the wings after you put the body on because if you do the opposite, you kind of have a lot of weight just resting on the wing tips and I can tell you it probably would crack. So in this way, you know, it's just, it's not the perfect, it's not a perfect fit. But I mean, it fits, but it's not a perfect fit. And I can tell you, I already have a, a few uh, scratches underneath the cape from the wing because it's not fitting perfectly. <clears throat> Still fits though. Um, but, uh, Definitely want probably two people on this to hold the body. Just make sure nothing falls when you're trying to piece it together. It could be a little tricky there. So let, let's go ahead and uh, keep going here. There's one of our arms. I think the left one is one that kind of sticks out. Just like that, it's coming together. Let's go ahead and put our fists on. This is the pointing one. So we'll put the fist on first. And then we'll throw this on. Just like that. So before you put this on, you kind of have to slide it over the shoulder and uh, so it actually slides just like on there. You could try this. It looks easy the way I just did it, but it's actually harder than it looks because it's really tricky finding the right spot for that. So, so I'm putting my fist back on and then uh, let's go ahead and get our arm back on. There we go, we got one shoulder pad. And then this one kind of slides in the back like this and you kind of have to tilt it and turn it and then it slides over the li this little notch on the arm there so this one you would think they'd go this way to stick out but they actually hide behind the cape there so let's go ahead and throw that one on so there's actually a little high spot here that's causing it not to go in. Hmm. So let's see if it goes in now. Not a perfect fit, but it does stay. Let's just leave it at that. I don't want to force anything. Let's go ahead and throw that in there. So that one just goes right in. Perfect fit on that one. Hmm. All right. One. This one points downward. So you got a little notch there. Just like that. This one's going to point outwards. Just like that. And lastly, we got the head. Let me show you real quick. So that just snaps off and you can see no brain, just a place for batteries. It actually snaps in. And then when you turn it around, you should be able to just touch it on, touch it off. It has a touch module on it. So that's pretty cool that you don't, you don't usually see. So let's throw the head on. And that's it. All right, so here is the final product. And this thing is pretty cool. I do like the uh, how it looks. I like the design of it and everything. And I even like the throne. So the throne of missiles is different. It's pretty cool. And I, di I didn't like it at first, but looking at it, just in person is just so much more different. Probably because this thing is just so massive. 
And again, uh, I was talking about the crown there, and a lot of people don't like the crown, but you know, that's actually pretty significant for Starscream because it's a pivotal point in history where Starscream actually died right after this. He had his coronation. It was the first time he actually was given the crown of the Decepticons, and right after that, he was blown away by Megatron. Galvatron, I should say. So, <clears throat> overall, my impressions... <coughs> my overall impressions of this, I, I do really like it. But the only thing I have a problem with is a lot of the pieces, like this leg piece and the wings, don't fit in perfectly. And this, little, this laser has a tiny little arch to it. You can't really notice it, but if you look at it, it does. So... I think Imaginarium art in general is probably not something I'm going to buy again. It's just because I guess I'm used to the Prime 1 pieces. I'm used to uh, the Sideshow pieces, how everything is just perfect. The paint's perfect. Everything fits. Um, and there's not one flaw. And with this, there is a little bit of flaws. I mean, it is very uh, intricate. And I'm going to say it's 90 eight percent unflawed if that makes sense it's just i th i feel like they could could have done a, just a just a little bit more effort to perfect it like the thing that bothers me the most is this wing in the tip is kind of laying on the seat here and it's actually bearing a little weight of this when i don't think it should so it's it's causing it to scratch up top and a little at the bottom and I've messed with this ever which way and there's no other way to put it on. That is just the way it is. It was just, uh, it's not a perfect seat. It needs to be sitting a little bit higher. And that kind of bugs me a little bit. But I guess if you just buy this and you, and you put it together and put it on your display, it's really no big deal. So, um, really cool piece, limited to 400. So very rare, don't see many of these. 31.5 inches tall, 17.7 uh, inches from wing tip to wing tip. So it is a very big piece there and uh, has 13 missiles, got your uh, little soft touch light up eyes, which I did not turn on. I guess you don't really need to see that. You know, and it's Starscream. Starscream's one of my favorite characters. He's an interesting character, you know. Uh, Originally, he hasn't always been the bad guy. He was actually a, a fighting gladiator and a politician fighting for Cybertron. At one point, he even had his own army called the Combaticons. And uh, until Megatron converted him, that's when he became uh, a Decepticon. So, um, and that's how we know him in the cartoons. So, um... In the story of uh, Starscream, he actually has a life force that can never be destroyed. Uh, he can possess other robots, machines, and even humans, which is kind of cheesy. But that's the story of him. He cannot st destroy his life force, so he is actually very powerful. His uh, original prototype names were Ulchtar, Silver Snake or Pretty Poison. I'm glad they didn't do any of those. Starscream is the perfect name uh, for him. And we all love Starscream. There was something about Starscream that was very appealing, even though he wasn't the main character, but he was a really cool Transformer. So I'm glad I'm gonna be able to display this next to my Optimus Jet Power when that comes in. And it's ironic that Jetfire is the arch nemesis of Starscream, so that's pretty cool. The only problem, this is Gen 1, and uh, the Optimus Jet Power is going to be the new generation Optimus, so it's not going to match, but that's okay. They're both really cool statues. Anyway, I'll do one more flip around here. I do appreciate the subscription, so if you can uh, click that button down below, I'd appreciate it. And give me a like. I do appreciate those. And uh, we're gonna, my next video, I'm just gonna throw Thanos up here and just do a little comparison. Not they, that they have anything to do with each other. I just think it'd be pretty cool. So 
I hope you had a good spooktacular. I did get a lot of cool things. I actually got my Mr. Freeze exclusive. So uh, it was on the Back from the Dead. I don't know if you participated, but I was able to get the exclusive Mr. Freeze. So I have the, uh, the collector's edition Mr. Freeze. So I'm gonna actually sell him and uh, put the exclusive up. Um, Mr. Freeze is one of my favorites, so I had to get that. I got the uh, little jo the Joker Batman from Su Suicide Squad. Um, Gladiator Hulk, that was, I missed that one and I got it at Back From The Dead. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed my video. And again, please subscribe, I do appreciate the support and we'll see you next time.